Jim Johnson is not sold on the Eagles actually being good in the NFC. Nick Sirianni was asked about bringing on Frank Reich as an analyst, and we'll get an update in terms of Avante Maddox's availability for Monday Night Football. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Friday as we get ready for a long weekend. In terms of a long weekend wait for Philadelphia on Monday night, we need to go ahead and jump into a typical Friday video on the show where we react to some of the hottest takes that have gone place, whether it's for the Philadelphia Eagles or other football teams around the National Football League. And then I want to get into this whole idea of bringing on Frank Reich as an analyst. We mentioned that in an earlier show just a couple of days ago. Now Nick Sirianni was actually asked about it in a press conference, and so we're going to jump into that here uh, in just a couple of minutes. First, though, let's go to our hot take of the week. Let's go to Jimmy Johnson, the former Cowboys Super Bowl winning head coach. Well, he was asked about, you know, the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. And listen, we know Jimmy Johnson is you know, biased towards the Dallas Cowboys, but he doesn't have to be this biased. I mean, this is as clear bias as it comes. Look at this quote via 105.3 The Fan. You see the tweet here. We'll throw it up on your screen. Quote, if you look at Philadelphia, they run a different style of offense that gives people problems right off the bat. Most of their scoring comes early, especially in the second quarter. But once a team adjusts to that, that different style and the second half, they're playing them touch and go. And the other thing is a team playing them for a second time will be better prepared for them. He would go on to say, quote, I think that this is the best Cowboys team I've seen. I'm still not 100% sold on Philadelphia. The NFC is down. I think the Cowboys have a better shot than most. So Jim Johnson here. Again, he's a really, really good head coach. Obviously a good analyst there for Fox, but he is a Dallas Cowboy through, through and through. He's a Dallas Cowboy at heart. His take, though, is fascinating, where he talks about how people are going to be able to, f to figure out the Philadelphia Eagles, that teams are going to be able to figure out this super easy offense that the Eagles run and put a stop to it the second time that they play them. Now, you're going to get a good, good look, get a good look at that on Monday because, obviously, the Washington Commanders are going to get a second look at the Philadelphia Eagles. This whole idea that Philadelphia only scores in the second quarter, to me, is so stupid because it makes the argument that, well, teams teams just don't game plan properly for the Eagles. Once they get on the football field, then they understand what they need to go ahead and do, which is so stupid, right? They obviously are game planning for the Philadelphia Eagles. They know what's coming, and yet they still are unable to stop it. Plus, Go back to the Dallas Cowboy game. Philadelphia needed a drive in the third or fourth quarter. I can't remember which one to score a touchdown and possibly win the game. And guess what? They went right down the football field and scored on that vaunted Dallas Cowboy defense. For whatever reason, Jimmy Johnson seemingly not sold on the Eagles. Failed to mention the fact that the Dallas Cowboy offense is very lackluster when it comes up against very, very good defenses. Yes, they scored a lot of points against the Bears, uh, you know, last time that they played. But when you come to playing actual good defenses, think Philadelphia, the lack of a number one w w a wide receiver alongside Side CD Lamb, you know the the oddity of Zeke in the run game. It's it, it weighs a little bit on them, and hence why I think Philadelphia has a much better shot of going way further than the Dallas Cowboys. Again, it's Jimmy Johnson. You'll go down in the comments section, saying, Thomas, who cares what Jimmy Johnson has to say? I don't. But it is funny to go ahead and hear. You know, a former NFL head coach say the Eagles, it's so simple to figure them out. I don't know why teams haven't been able to do it. They will the second time around, and yet no one's been able to figure them out yet. So I guess if the Eagles blow out the Washington Commanders on Monday, then this whole take about playing them a second time, you're going to have a better shot, is dead on arrival, and we can put it to rest. So we'll see what happens, Jimmy. I know you're excited for December 24th when your Cowboys get a second shot at the Eagles, but I think Philadelphia is going to be just fine. If you guys agree, give this show a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Getting close to 6K subs here on the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay, let's go over here to the Frank Reich conversation that has been had among a lot of people in Philadelphia, and now it includes Nick Sirianni. Bleeding Green Nation has the right up here when they were at the press conference where Nick Sirianni was asked about Frank Reich coming over to Philadelphia, and it's a it's a very head coachy sort of answer, but I think we can kind of glean some information about this based on his response. Here it is, on Frank Reich being fired, quote, so obviously, I'm only concerned about what's going on in Philly and trying to keep my eyes on it, just what the situation is here, and that's being ready for Washington. But as you know, what I think about Frank and how much I respect Frank as a person, how much I respect him as a football coach, you can probably imagine how I feel. Later on, Sirianna was asked whether he'd consider bringing Reich back to Philadelphia in some capacity. I don't know yet. That's not something that's been, uh, that's been, uh, that happened, what, Monday? My focus has been completely on Washington. So again, you know how I feel about Frank. I'm always going to use him as a consultant, whether he's in the building or he's not in the building. But I haven't really thought about that, to be quite honest. We're just focusing, or focused on today to get ready for Washington, end quote. So here's Sirianni 
basically saying, hey, I haven't thought about it, you know, we're not going to bring him in tomorrow, it's not something we're going to go crazy on, but then he also says, hey, you guys know how much I love Frank Reich, you know how Frank Reich basically got me this job in Philadelphia because of the connections, the fact that I was Frank Reich's offensive coordinator, oh, and I always listen to Frank Reich, I always consult him whether he's in the building or not, that tells me that there could be a very real possibility that Frank Reich, whether we know or not, could be, you know, consulting for this Philadelphia Eagle offense in the very near future. Now, whether that means he's going to be wearing, you know, an Eagle shirt on the sideline, with a headset and actually consulting, like where you can see him during an NFL broadcast, or if Sirianni just picks the phone up and says, hey, you know, Frank, what do you think of this game plan? What do you think of that? What do you think about playing this offense versus that defense? I'm not sure, but this whole idea that the Eagles would never touch Frank Reich, and a lot of people commented that on a recent show of mine, is ridiculous. Nick Sirianni and Frank Reich are like this. I mean, Frank Reich I mean, literally uh, is the probably number one mentor of Nick Sirianni. I think there's more to, of a connection than meets the eye, and there's probably more going on you know, behind the scenes in the future than a lot of people do realize. Okay, we'll get into a quick injury report regarding Monday Night Football and an update on Avante Maddox here in just one second. First, though, the DraftKings promo right now is still going on. The link down below in the description box where if you feel so good about the Eagles, put your money where your mouth is. You bet $5 using my DraftKings sign-up. You win $200 in free bets if your first money line bet wins. Now, if you're not a you know, a big sports better. What does that mean? It means you bet $5 on the Eagles to win using my link if you're a first-time signer-upper, if that's even a word, and you get $200 in free bets. You're winning 200 bucks if the Eagles win on Monday night. Now, I feel pretty good about the Eagles winning on Monday night. I think you do as well. Jump in on this, on this DraftKings deal. I think a lot of you guys would really, really uh, have fun. I really would appreciate uh, the $200 in free bets if the Eagles were to win. So link is down below right now. Okay, quickly here, let's jump into the injury report on a Friday. This can change as it's a Monday night game, and so, you know, you take this with a grain of salt. But two cornerbacks did miss practice, according to Bleeding Green Nation, and those were Avante Maddox with the hamstring and Josh Joby with the hamstring as well. Maddox has been on and off in the injury report all year long. He's been one of the, uh, I'd say, lone corners who's been there almost every single week. There was a Darius Slay problem early on in the year, but he's kind of, you know, ironed things out with his ankle or hamstring, whatever it was. He seems good to go, but Maddox's hamstring is definitely something to go ahead and keep an eye on to see if he's going to be able to go on Monday night. Now, the Ranger Report does talk, does, does mention, at least the Bleeding Green Nation write-up does mention they expect Maddox to be able to play, but hamstrings are very finicky, and they can get kind of tight depending on what the weather is like on Monday night, depending on how his warm-up goes on Monday night. And so I think it's more of a game-time decision for Avante Maddox that we will not know until probably Monday morning or maybe you know a couple minutes before kickoff. But as it stands right now, the only other eagle that is actually, uh, you know, in terms of uh, having an injury right now is Maddox. And the rest, as you see here, who were limited, all had a day off due to rest, which is good. Because, you know, if you're an older eagle like a uh, Fletcher Cox or Brandon Graham, rest is always a good thing. So the eagles are healthy. That's that's fantastic news for Philadelphia. In terms of Washington, there was a couple of little injuries here. A couple of DNPs in Cole Holcomb. Their linebacker dealing with a foot injury. And J.D. McKissick, who's been dealing with a neck injury right now. Holcomb is expected to go ahead and play on Sunday, and Washington does need him as he has played the most snaps out of any Washington defensive player and leads the league, leads their team in tackles right now. He should be able to play, but because they did not practice with a foot and a neck, there is a chance that Holcomb and McKissick might not play. We'll probably find out more. <laughs> excuse me, on that, probably on Monday night. The rest of the guys were pretty much good to go. J uh, Jahan Dotson with the hamstring injury, Larson with the back, and David Mayo with the hamstring. Those were all limited, and we expect them to go ahead and play. Mayo is a backup linebacker, and so he could see an elevation to a starting role if Holcomb is unable to go. Okay, we'll go ahead and get into our final story, our National League story of the day here in just one second. First, be sure to subscribe to the Thomas Mott Show as we approach 6,000 subs. Maybe by the time you're watching this on a Saturday or a Sunday, we have hit it. And we are getting so close. I appreciate all 5,900 and whatever it is right now of you guys who are fans of the show. I try and give you guys you know, the latest and greatest Eagles news, give you guys my own hot takes, give you guys my own you know, storylines. I try to make it fun and enjoyable here. If you guys appreciate that, give the show a thumbs up. Okay, I want to mention just quickly here, in terms of our National League story of the day, on a Friday, fresh off of Thursday Night Football, uh, the NFC South. I want to admit that I was probably wrong on Atlanta. I said probably, what, the past two weekends that I think Atlanta could still be a team Philadelphia plays in the divisional round if Atlanta were to win or if Philadelphia were to not be the one seed, maybe the wild card round. Atlanta's, mm, they're, they're terrible. You saw it last night. Their offense is anemic. And I was a fan of Marcus Mariota going into the year. It's clear that he is not the, op the, uh, the, the best option from a quarterback perspective, I think Desmond Ritter should start for the Atlanta Falcons going forward. But right now, it looks like Tampa Bay and Tom Brady are going to go ahead and win the NFC South, despite the fact they've been anemic offensively and a really disappointing football team so far this year. 
I do think that that is going to be a very, very good hurdle for Philadelphia. I think the Bucks winning the South and potentially playing Philadelphia um, in, you know, the divisional round or having to the wild card round or maybe even something like, you know, NFC Championship game, it could be a really good opportunity for Philadelphia to, one, match up very, very well against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they do. They match up incredibly well against Tampa. And two, get that Tampa Tom off their back. I mean, anyone who wants to rip Philadelphia last year only has to go as far back as the Tampa Bay wild card round game where Jalen Hurts struggled immensely and the team was down by double digits early. Or sorry, yeah, it was double digits early in like the first or second quarter. If they're able to come back and beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. In the playoffs, remember, regardless of how good the football team is in the playoffs, I think a lot more of those Jalen Hurts doubters will come back to the good side here and be a lot bigger fans of what Hurts and the Eagles have been able to do. So Atlanta out, Tampa Bay is in, and I think your division winners are, are, are very clear in three of the four NFC conferences right now. Philadelphia in ours, Minnesota in the north, Tampa Bay in the south. It's the west that still has to be won, but it looks like it's a two-horse race between the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers, and so we'll wait and see what happens uh, with that one. But things are becoming a lot more clear on the top side of the NFC, it's the wild card round where it's going to be interesting in terms of where's Dallas, where's the Giants, where's Green Bay if they sneak in, where's San Francisco. Like that's going to be where a lot of these uh, last minute battles are won or lost in terms of who Philadelphia can play in the playoffs and who actually makes the playoffs as a whole. All right, plenty more great content coming up over the next couple of days. We have shows for you guys on Saturday, tomorrow, and Sunday because, of course, there is no Eagle game, and so we got to at least give you guys something uh, to get ready and look forward to for the Monday Nighter. So we'll dive into some more stuff here over the next couple of days and weeks. Make sure to do thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the show. I'm Thomas Mott. See you guys in the next one.